The Masters is one of the most prestigious golf tournaments in the world, held at the iconic Augusta National Golf Club. Playing Augusta is a privilege that every golfer dreams of, but not many get to actually do. John Bednarowski of the Marietta Daily Journal and Times Journal Incorporated got a chance to play the course and is taking us on a hole-by-hole tour of his round. Join us later in this episode for the exclusive feature on this legendary course as we take a closer look at the history, traditions, and the magic of the Augusta National and Masters, presented by Ingalls. From the Chattahoochee Tech Studio, welcome to the Marietta Daily Journal podcast. Today is Tuesday, March 28th, and happy 37th birthday to Lady Gaga. I'm Dan Ratcliffe, and here are your top stories presented by Credit Union of Georgia. One person has died after a fire at a town center homeless camp. North Point Ministries breaks ground on its East Cobb Church. And Cobb celebrated the second annual Georgia Food and Wine Festival. Plus, we sit down with MDJ Sports Editor John Bednarowski as he continues to take us on a tour around Augusta National, presented by Ingalls. We'll have all this and more coming up on the Marietta Daily Journal podcast. You deserve better than your bank. Better service, better rates better solutions. If you live or work in Cobb County, now is the perfect time to make the switch to Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. Since 1960, Credit Union of Georgia has been providing Northwest Georgia with financial solutions that make sense for your home, business, and family. As a homegrown, not-for-profit cooperative, our members are our mission. Not only will you get the best loan rates, you'll get personalized customer service from people who understand your needs. Plus, Credit Union of Georgia provides real convenience with a network of more than 30,000 accessible ATMs and branch locations across the country. Of course, there's also five locations right here in Cobb County. Ready to see how much better your banking can be with Credit Union of Georgia? Become a member today or apply for a loan online by visiting cuofga.com. Dot org. Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. One person was killed in an early morning fire at a homeless camp in the town center area. Firefighters responded to the fire around 1.15 a.m. Monday near I-75 at Barrett Parkway. Per police, the fire was burning in a homeless encampment in the woods near the I-75 north off-ramp. Firefighters extinguished a burning tent and discovered a body. The Cobb Police Major Crimes Unit and the Cobb Fire Arson Unit are investigating the incident. North Point Ministries has finally begun construction on its new church and housing development in East Cobb after nearly a year of compromise and negotiation with the county. The plan, which will see the construction of a 125,000 square foot church and up to 95 single family homes and townhomes, was met with opposition from residents concerned about stormwater impacts and housing density. The church's lead pastor, Jamie Dickens, said he was thankful for the residents who were engaged in the process, believing it made the final plan better. The church is hoping to complete construction within two years, depending on factors such as the supply chain and weather. It was jammy, plummy, dense, and chewy. (laughs) There is no doubt in my mind that it was a Napa Valley Merlot. A nice big wine with excellent heft. It's Napa, all right, but as I always say, why go Merlot when you can call a cab? The Georgia Food and Wine Festival was held at Jim R. Miller Park with thousands of people attending to sample some of Georgia's best food, beer, wine, and spirits. Vendors interacted with customers as they mixed drinks, poured samples, and served food. The festival goers enjoyed the sounds of live music and the aroma of smoked meat. Tequila, vodka, jalapeno margaritas, and other cold beverages helped keep the revelers cool. Chef, author, and farmer Matthew Rayford cooked beef tacos, speaking to the crowd and sharing his family's history. Various booths sold art and miscellaneous products. Overall, it was a great day for people to spend time outdoors eating, drinking, and enjoying the festivities. That was a crazy Janice Overbeck and former NFL player Terrence Mathis recently hosted a Celebrity Poker Night fundraiser for Emory ALS, where attendees tried their luck in the tournament while raising funds through a silent auction and Big Green Egg raffle. 
The event was attended by local celebrities such as Jerome the Bus Bettis and Jesse Tuggle of the NFL and Corey Patterson of the MLB. Through donations and ticket sales, the event raised $30,000, which was presented to Dr. Jonathan Glass of the Emory ALS Reach Center. Since 2016, the Janice Overbeck Real Estate Team's nonprofit, J.O. Gives Inc., has hosted fundraising events and made donations to the Emory University ALS Research Center annually. Is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? I'm a doctor. Eh. What's up, Doc? Over 60 students from South Cobb High School's Academy of Research and Medical Science program received their white coats and stethoscopes in a recent ceremony. The white coat is a symbol of trust, integrity, and authority in the medical field. The ceremony celebrated the students' dedication and hard work, with keynote speakers emphasizing the importance of researchers and technicians in modern medicine. Entrepreneur George Amos Jr. gave advice to the soon-to-be medical professionals, encouraging them to invest in themselves and get comfortable with being uncomfortable. The event was a time of pride, excitement, and joy for all attendees. Engineer solutions of Georgia. We guarantee a stable, dry foundation. With over 30 years of experience and a lifetime of support, residential and commercial. Hey, we do it all. For basement waterproofing and repairs to your foundation. Dial 678-ESOG now. In Georgia, the weather never ceases to do unpredictable things. Peace of mind should be top of mind where it comes to your heating and cooling system. Daco Systems has three generations of experience with HVAC excellence they've shared with Cobb County and the greater metro Atlanta area. Daco Systems has been family owned and operated since they started out, and Dean Yarrington has built their business into what it is today through policies of honesty, responsiveness, and attention to the needs of customers. The Daco Systems team is equipped with the knowledge, tools, products, and over four decades of experience that help them get each job done right the first time, and they back that up with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Along with exceptional service, Daco Systems provides free estimates on new heating and AC installations, and you can reach them after hours when you have an HVAC emergency. Get peace of mind. Call Daco Systems today at 770-209-2261 or visit them online at dacosystems.com. Daco Systems, a premier train comfort specialist. Now through April 30th, get a preseason air conditioning tune-up for the first unit for $69.95 and $39.95 for additional units. Call Deco. He's got jelly beans for Tommy, colored eggs for Sister Sue. There's an orchid for your mommy and an Easter bonnet too. Oh, here comes Peter Cotton. There are a lot of ways to celebrate Easter in Cobb County over the next few weeks. Here's community reporter Matt Golden with more. The city of Powder Springs will have Easter egg quests from now to April 9th from dawn to dusk. Participants can explore over 50 oversized Easter eggs painted by local elementary school children around Thurman Springs Park and the downtown area. After completing the egg quest, stop by the Bookworm Bookstore in downtown Powder Springs for a special treat from Macklin Baptist Church. Cobb County Parks will have the 30th annual Cobb Extravaganza on April 1st from noon to 4 p.m. at the Al Bishop Softball Complex in Marietta. Participants can bring the family for a day of fun with Easter egg hunts. For ages 10 and under, there will be food available for purchase, free games, crafts, and family activities and prizes. Gates open at noon with the following hunt times. Three-year-old and under will be 1 p.m., four to five-year-olds at 1.30, six to seven-year-olds at 2, eight to ten-year-olds at 2.30, and all ages at 3 p.m. For more information, please head over to cobbcounty.org parks. The Kennesaw Parks and Rec Department will have the annual Bunny Breakfast on April 1st at the Ben Robertson Community Center in Kennesaw. There will be two seatings available, 8 to 9.15 a.m. and 10 to 11.15 a.m. Attendees will be treated to a buffet including hot and ready pancakes, scrambled eggs, sausage, as well as a medley of fresh fruits and breakfast sweets. Everyone's favorite cottontail will be making his way from table to table to say hello to all the boys and girls 
Attendees are encouraged to bring their own camera to capture photos with the Easter Bunny. Tickets are $8 per person and can be purchased online or at the Ben Robertson Community Center. Advanced purchase is required. Tickets are non-refundable after March 24th. Children ages 2 and under do not need a ticket if they will be sitting in labs. New this year, experience the beauty of Smith Gilbert Gardens at the annual egg hunt April 1st with a combo bunny breakfast egg hunt ticket. The egg hunt is open to children up to 9 years of age. Easter themed crafts will be available at the egg hunt as well as organized garden games. Marietta Parks and Recreation will have the Bunny Brunch on April 1st at 10 a.m. at Custer's Park Sports and Fitness Center in Marietta. The event will feature brunch, crafts, an egg hunt, and photos with the Easter Bunny in an up-close and intimate setting. Cost is $8 for Marietta residents, $10 for non-residents. Space is limited. Registration is required for all attendees over the age of three. April 4th, the Senior Wellness Center on Powder Springs Street in Marietta will have Easter Egg Bath Bomb from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Participants will make Easter Egg Bath Bombs colorful bath salts that one tosses into the tub that fizz and make the water smell heavenly. Cost is $7. Registration is required. For more information, please visit CobbSeniors.org. April 6th, the North Cobb Senior Center will have an Easter Scavenger Hunt from 1 to 2 p.m. This is a fun scavenger hunt based on the Clue board game. Using the process of elimination, participants will work together to solve a mystery and be rewarded with a sweet treat. It's free, but registration is required. For more information, also head to copseniors.org. The Marietta Community Egg Hunt, sponsored by Superior Plumbing and the Marietta Business Association, will be April 7th from 5 to 9 p.m. at Life University's Athletic Complex in Marietta. The event will feature food, games, music activities, and egg hunts for everybody. There will be over 60,000 eggs and candy for various hunts. The funds raised from the egg hunt go to support Marietta City Schools via the Marietta Business Association Education Programs. Admission is free and parking is free at Life University. The egg hunt schedule will be 5.30 p.m. for ages 3 and under. 6 p.m. is a special needs egg hunt. 7 p.m. for ages 4 to 7. 8 p.m. is a special needs egg hunt. 8.30 is ages 8 and 10. Toddler hunts are located in a separate area and will be 5 37 and 8 30 p.m. There will be food vendors on hand in Ultimate Kids Zones, which are $10 per child for unlimited rides. The 14th annual Northeast Cobb Community Egg Drop hosted by Piedmont Church and Cobb County School District will be April 8th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Sprayberry High School football field and stadium area. The event, presented by Superior Plumbing and CNS Paving, will feature food, games, a DJ, activities, and egg hunts for everyone. Children can marvel as a helicopter drops thousands of eggs onto the school's football field to kick off the hunt. Admission to the event is free and there's ample parking at the school. There will be more than 90,000 eggs and candy for the various hunts. The funds raised from the egg drop go to support multiple organizations in the community. In 2022, $10,000 went right back into the community from the event. The event schedule on the football field is 11.30 a.m. will have the helicopter drop eggs for ages 3 and under to hunt. Noon will be the special needs hunt sponsored by CNS Paving. 1.30 p.m. will have a helicopter egg drop for ages 4 to 7 to hunt. 2 p.m. will be a special needs egg hunt. And 3.30 p.m. will be ages 8 to 10 egg hunt. Toddler hunts will be separate and located in the food court area. They will be held at 11.30 a.m., 1.30, and 3.30 p.m. The food court is sponsored by Children's Health Care of Atlanta. The Kids Zone is sponsored by 313 Salon. The Ultimate Kids Zones are $10 per child for unlimited rides. There will be free photos with the Easter Bunny from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. presented by Any Pest. Friends of Mableton, Hope Family Resource Center, First Christian Church of Mableton, and South Lions Club are hosting Easter Egg Extravaganza on Mableton Square. An Easter egg hunt, April 8th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event is for children ages 2 to 5th grade and will be held on Mableton Square, which is located next to Mableton Elementary School. The Cobb County Police Bomb Squad will host its second annual Beeping Egg Hunt on April 8th from 9 to 11 a.m. at Horizon Field in the Ackworth Sports Complex in Ackworth. This hunt is designed for children who are unable to spot eggs in a usual hunt and instead track them down by a beeping sound. If you have a child or know a child who would enjoy this experience, please let their parents know so they can sign them up for the event. This event is for visually impaired children only. The complex is located at 4000 South Main Street, Ackworth. For more on all these events, please head to mdjonline.com. For the Marietta Daily Journal Podcast, I'm Matt Golden. 
Productivity Top of the AM to every good buddy here as chairman of the PTA. I am D diddly delighted to take over and I think I can put the pal back in principle. The Marietta City Schools Board of Education has approved the appointment of two new principals for Marietta High School and Lockheed Elementary. Marvin J. Crumbs will take over as principal of Marietta High after serving as principal of Columbus High School for 11 years, replacing interim principal Marco Holland. Trisha Patterson, the current principal of the Marietta Center for Advanced Academics, will assume the position of principal of Lockheed Elementary School. Both principals will begin their new roles in June. Oh, are you having cake? Always Cake Bakery, owned by Chef Nicole Green, had their grand opening last Saturday at their new store in Marietta. The bakery, which started in Green's home in 2018, offers custom-made cakes and a wide variety of other baked goods such as cupcakes, biscuits, pies, muffins, and toffee. Green, a graduate of the Culinary Institute of America, has spent 20 years in the restaurant business and moved to Powder Springs with her husband seven years ago. Always Cake Bakery is located at 1812 Powder Springs Road and is open Tuesday through Sunday. As we get closer to the start of the 2023 Masters, Times Journal Incorporated sports editor John Bednarowski joins the show to continue to take us on a tour of Augusta National presented by Ingalls. And we're back. I'm Brian Giffen with John Bednarowski, the sports editor of the Marietta Daily Journal, and we're covering the Masters 2023. John will be over there covering the tournament this year as he normally does. And John, as we've talked about, had the opportunity to play Augusta National. What a dream thing that is. And he's given us now holes 1 through 12, and now we go to the last third of the fabled golf course. John, lucky number 13, or was it? Uh, yes, it was, uh, it was good. And then, you know, this, uh, I got to play the golf course in 2018 and, uh, I, I remember every single shot vividly, uh, well, at least the good ones. <laughs> and, uh, 13 was one of those, uh, good holes, you know, 13 a par five and there's, uh, it, it's, uh, you, you leave the 12th hole. Uh, behind Ray's Creek and you go over and tee off and uh, I did not hit a good tee shot so I barely got it off the ground um, it was you know it, it carried out into the fairway but I'm just barely uh, in there and I hit my second shot uh, from I'm, actually when I hit my tee shot I was in one of the flat areas that you know there's about five flat areas on the entire property <laughs> at Augusta National and I managed to find it and uh, I hit a good really good layup because there's no way I can uh, I could go from the green from where I was and I left myself uh, I, I left myself about a hundred and oh 120 yards into the green and I yanked my third shot left and I mean it was it was left of left to where I thought okay here comes my first seven or worse of the day um, but I got I, when I got to my ball I got lucky I avoided sand uh, I was in uh, the uh, little gully left of the green but I still felt like I had almost an impossible chip shot because I'm coming up over the ridge and then the ball is going to go downhill toward the hole and the tributary that runs to Ray's Creek is like five feet off the edge where if it goes just a little too far it's going to go down into the water and then I'm I, I've got no chance but uh I hit a pretty good pitch shot and ended up about 10 feet behind the hole. And uh, I two putted for bogey. And, and, you know, it was one of those where I had put myself twice in such a bad spot to walk off the hole with a, uh, with a bogey. It felt like a birdie. It was, uh, and, you know, you, you see all these guys, you know, Curtis Strange knocked a ball in the water uh, in 85 and it kept him from winning. And you, you see, uh, you know, 
13 Fred Couples hit it left and imploded one year. And, you know, and then you get Phil Mickelson hitting it out from underneath the pine trees to four feet. People forget that was one of the greatest shots Phil hit, but then he missed the putt and, and settled for birdie instead of making an incredible eagle. But he went on to win the tournament, so who's counting? But uh, that is one of those biggest risk-reward holes in golf. And, you know, th there are such things as good bogeys, and I, I felt like I made one there. Well, so far, so good. Again, really throughout for somebody who had never played there. And obviously, it's one of the toughest golf courses in the world, which is part of the whole thing, after all. Now we go to the 14th, and you're starting to get now into those holes where the difference is made, ultimately, on the last day of the fabled tournament. What are your thoughts as you look back to hole number 14 at Augusta? 14, I was tired. I mean, uh, again, um, I'm overweight. I will admit it. I make, make a lot of jokes about that being the case, but um, I was even more overweight at that time, and I really started to feel it on the 14th hole. And 14 is basically straight uphill. Now, the, the last few holes, you're going to go straight uphill on 14. You're going to go straight downhill on 15. 16 is low, so that's relatively flat. But then 17 is up straight uphill, and then 18 is extreme uphill. Right. So about this time, my legs are starting to feel like jello. And you've been walking this thing. After been walking all, so, the whole yeah. time, and trust me, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Of course. But um, uh, you know, I'm I'm really starting to feel it, and I hit one of my worst tee shots of the day. I hit it left into the trees. Uh, because what you want to do on that hole, the pros, they'll hit, uh, a lot of times they'll hit three wood, they'll hit a little cut shot. Now the fairway goes from left to right, so you got to be careful where you land it so it remains in the fairway. But then, you know, for the pros, their second shot, they have a relatively uh, straightforward second shot, eight iron, nine iron wedge, somewhere in there where they can really take aim at the pin, which is generally uh, in the bowl uh, over there on the uh, right-hand side where you can hit it, have the ball feed down there and potentially make a birdie. I hit my ball so far left into the trees that uh, I, I couldn't see the fairway from where I was. And I hit my second shot and I got lucky. There's a there's a rule uh, or an adage that trees are 90% air. In this particular case, they were correct. Wow. I hit some leaves going through. I don't know how I managed to not hit uh, branches, but I was still left of left uh, over there. But I got to where I could at least make an attempt at the green. I was still hitting like nine iron in. And I hit it, and I thought I was going to get lucky and have it catch the slope and curl down and maybe make a par, but went all the way to the back edge, and it hung up in the fringe. So now I'm 20 feet above the hole, and again, I wanted to read the greens. When I was a good player, I could putt the ball really well. And I did a really good job of reading greens. And my caddy, David, I said, I'm going to read the greens. And then I'm, you know, then I'm going to defer to you and you tell me where I'm supposed to putt. So I line up the putt and I think I've got about a six or a seven foot right to left break because it's going to go down the slope and then start making a left hand turn. And once again, he looks at me and says no and he walks about 10 feet farther to the right and he says put it over this spot so i'm coming off the fringe and i aim way over there and sure enough it gets right to where he was and it looks like it's going to die right there and the next thing you know it takes this 90 degree left hand turn and rolls down by the hole and i had a little tap in about uh about eight inches for uh for a bogey and uh ran to the 15th tee. <laughs> well, you just heard him say it. So now we're on to the 15th, and he ran there. Even though he was tired, coming up the last hole, he ran to the 15th. How was the 15th for you? Well, 
I told you way back on the, the, the first episode of this, I had I managed to par number two and number four. And I told you there weren't a whole lot more pars to be made. But I got up on 15, hit it in the fairway, hit a, a second shot down on the flat area on the left-hand side of the fairway, um, kind of over where the uh, Saracen Bridge starts to go around the uh, pond that guards the green. And this is another one of those greens where you're looking at it on TV and the thing looks huge. Right. <clears throat> And it is, you know, it's large from left left edge to right edge, but it's really only a. It, it it seems like where the pin was, it's only about twenty feet deep. And I hit a pitching wedge, and it went right over the stick and landed about oh twelve feet behind the hole. So I was feeling pretty good about myself because earlier that week. Sergio Garcia had come in as the defending champion and knocked five balls in the water and took <laughs> 13. So, you know, again, I read my putt and David says, no, you got to aim another 10 feet over here to the right. And I hit it right where he wanted me to. And it, 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 it went out and it circled and came back around the bottom of the cup. And I had about two feet straight up the hill coming back, made the putt for par, and beat the defending champion by eight shots on that. Wow. Line. So, I see you know, that. And, and, and when you look back, that may be arguably the most famous hole out there because, you know, Nicholas in 86 makes Eagle there. You've right. got the, you know, you've got all the players that are going for the green in two. And that and 16 are probably where the tournament is decided on Sunday afternoon more often than not. Well, he mentioned 16, and that's where we head now. The 16th hole at Augusta National. John Bednarowski of the Marietta Daily Journal had the opportunity to play at Augusta National, covering the Masters, as he always does. And uh, we're visiting with John today. Let's talk about hole number 16. You're getting close to the end here. In 86, Nicholas almost holed out. Uh for a one uh, on his way to victory. Tiger has the famous shot of chipping in from behind the green, going up the slope and bringing it back down and having the ball just sit on the edge. So at Nike got a really long free commercial right. uh, <laughs> that particular day. And, you know, where the pin normally is, it's in the bottom left section toward the back of the green. The bunker is just to the left. And you've got this giant slope over here on the right. <clears throat> it's become a very popular spot uh, lately because for just about every year now on Sunday, you're having at least one, if not two, sometimes three players make uh, holes in one uh, on that because it's, it's in that traditional spot and they know that if they hit the club the right distance and play it out onto the slope there on the right, it's going to bring it right back down to the hole, and they, they should have a relatively easy uh, chance at a birdie. Well, I'm not them. <laughs> so I've got a six iron in my hand, and it's playing about 165 for us. And I hit it solid, but I pulled it left. And, but I, I, I didn't pull it left far enough to where it got into the water. I hit it into that bunker there that guards the hole there on the left-hand side. And what I tried to do was I tried to use the slope. I was going to uh, hit my bunker shot, take it out past the, uh, past the pin, and bring it back. And I was hoping to hit a spot because I thought it would bring it right back down to the hole. And again, I pulled it a little left. So it went up the slope and came back down uh, the back edge. And for the second time during uh, the round, I hit the putt way too hard. So I had a 10-footer, 8-10-footer for par. Now I've got an 8-10-footer for, uh, for bogey. And luckily enough, I hit a good putt and it went in. 
So, uh, you know, then uh, again, there's a whole lot of good bogeys in this round of golf. Yeah, no doubt about it. What a what a great opportunity. And it sounds like you acquitted yourself really well. We're 16 holes in now. Two of them left. John talked about it. 17 is uphill. 18 is almost straight uphill. Discover the vivid palette of our world in Fernbank Museum's immersive and interactive exhibit, The Nature of Color. Step into a color-changing room, virtually paint, and grasp the meaning of color diversity as you explore how hues play roles in nature, emotion, science, and culture. Paint your world full of fun, beauty, and wonder for a limited time. Get tickets at fernbankmuseum.org color. Hi. I'm Glenn Drake, owner of Drake Realty. The world's changed a lot in the last year, so Drake Realty is changing with it. Our newest website allows you to find your property and agent, then we take care of the rest. We have experienced partners in state-of-the-art technology to keep your earnest money safe and closings on time. If you're looking for a seamless transaction from contract to close, visit us online at drakerealty.com. Thanks again for listening to today's Marietta Daily Journal podcast. Did you know over 50% of Americans listen to podcasts weekly? Make sure you join us for our next episode and share this podcast on social media with your friends and family. You can find us on TikTok at MDJ Podcast, add us to your Alexa Flash Briefing or Google Home Briefing, and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group. Darren Sutherland, executive producer. Jacob Sutherland, director. Producers Jason Gentarola and Matt Golden. And Jin Rei Zhang, video producer. All rights reserved.